Hi guys, and thanks for tuning in. I've decided to create a series of videos on YouTube on how to use Gramps, which is a piece of genealogical research software. It's open source, which means that it's free to download and use. But one problem that I've experienced using Gramps is that there's a major learning curve in using this program. There also aren't many resources out there demonstrating how to use it, besides reading the instructional manual, which can be confusing for some people. So I'll be giving you some tutorials to understand how to use this software and how I specifically use it. Hopefully this will help you to better manage and organize your own research. One note is that all of these tutorials will be in Windows 10. So if you have a different operating system, some things you see on this tutorial may be slightly different for you. Now in this video, we're going to look at how to install Gramps. So first of all, I'm going to take you through how to download the program, where you can obtain it, and I'm going to show you how to download the file you need to install through Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox. Next, I'll show you how to actually install Gramps and walk you through the installation process. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to uninstall Gramps should you no longer want to have it on your system. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's pull up an Internet Explorer browser. And you're going to want to go to gramps-project.org. This is the Gramps homepage. If you notice in the top right hand side, there is a link that says download Gramps. Go ahead and click on that and it will take you to their download page. Now under contents, you can see they have downloads for Linux, Windows, and Mac as well. We're going to go ahead and click Microsoft Windows since I'm running Windows 10. Under the Microsoft Windows, you can see they have a 32-bit and 64-bit installation file. If you're not sure what your computer is, you can go ahead and get the 32-bit as it will run on either. Now I know that my machine is a 64-bit, so I'm going to go ahead and install the 64-bit file. Now there's a couple ways that we can obtain this file. One way is to right click on the link and go to save target as, click, and it will bring up a window asking us where we would like to save our file. Now mine's defaulting to the downloads folder, but you can change this if you don't know where that is. You can go ahead and choose desktop and it would save it to your desktop. You click on save and it will begin the download process. Now I'm going to click cancel because I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to do this. All right, you can also left click on the link and it's going to bring up a bar on the bottom of your Internet Explorer browser saying, do you want to run or save? If you click on run, it's going to download and as soon as the download is finished, it's going to automatically open the file. If you click save, it's going to save to the default save location. So in my case, it would probably be the download folder. If you click on this down arrow, it's going to give you a couple more options. So you can either save as, which is what we just did before when we right clicked and went to save target as, or we can also go to save and run, which is going to download and save the file and then automatically open it up when it's finished. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I'm going to show you how to do it in a couple more browsers. So I'm going to go ahead and close Internet Explorer for now, and I'm going to open Google Chrome. So here we are again on the gramps-project.org homepage. On the top right hand side, there is the download Gramps link. Go ahead and click on that and it's going to take us to the download page. Again, we can click on Microsoft Windows and it will take us to the Microsoft Windows download instructions. We can choose between 32 and 64 bit. Since my machine is 64, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And there again are two ways that we can download this. We can right click on the link and we can save link as. This will again open up a window and we can choose where we want to save it. Now mine's defaulting to the desktop. I could choose somewhere else if I wished. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. You can also left click and in Chrome it's going to automatically start downloading. You'll see down at the very bottom of your browser window there's a download starting to progress. Once this download is finished, it's going to, this blue um, status icon will change into the actual icon of the file. 
as you can see. And now if we click this, it's actually going to open the file. So we don't actually need to even know where it's downloading to. All right, I'm gonna show you one more way now how to do this. Lastly, let's go ahead and open up a Firefox browser window. Again, we're at gramps-project.org. We can click the download Gramps link in the top right. And then we can scroll down to Microsoft Windows. It gives us the options of 32 and 64 bit. I'm going to go ahead and install the 64 bit. So if we can, like before, right click and go to save link as. This will bring up the same window, which asks us where we would like to download it. Or we can left click. And it's going to ask us again, you have chosen to open this file. Would you like to save it? If you click on save, it's going to automatically save wherever your default location is. If you're not sure where that is and you can't find your file, you can click up here on the down pointing arrow, which says display the progress of ongoing downloads. You can also press control J. And this is going to show you the status of the download. Now mine is already completed. So I can either click here and it will open the folder that the file just went to, or I can actually just click this button right here and it will open the file for me. Now I know that mine went to my desktop, so I'm gonna show you how to actually open it from the file. All right, so as you can see, we have a file here on my desktop called Gramps AIO 4.2.5. This is our installation file that we'll use to install Gramps. So go ahead and double click this if you're using it from the file. If you just clicked it on your browser and it went ahead and automatically opened, that's fine too. It's gonna bring up a message asking if I'd like to make changes. Now you probably can't see this on my recording, but it says, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device? And it lists the file. So go ahead and say yes. And now it says, welcome to Gramps. All right, so this is gonna guide you through the installation of Gramps. So let's go ahead and click on next. All right, here's the license agreement. You can go ahead and read that if you'd like, and then click on I agree if you accept the terms. All right, this window is saying choose users. So if your computer has multiple users that log in on the computer on different user um, profiles, you can install it for everyone or just you. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for everyone. It doesn't matter to me. And this next window here is choose components. Now this is just asking if you want um, alternate dictionaries and languages installed on your Gramps. It defaults to English, so you really don't need to do anything else unless you need alternative languages in here. Okay, next it's going to show you to choose the install location. I'm fine with where it automatically chooses. So I'm gonna go ahead and click install. Now this will take between three and 30 minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the recording now so we can get to the end of the installation. All right, so as you can see, as the installation progresses, the green bar at the top will continue to fill up. So once it's completely full, your installation will be complete. All right, so it will tell you at the top of the install window, installation complete, setup was completed successfully. So you can go ahead and click on next once it is done. And then it's going to say, click finish to close setup. And it's also going to say, run Gramps. Now I don't want to run Gramps right away because I want to show you how to run it from your computer versus from this window because you won't have this window next time. So I'm going to uncheck that and click on finish. Now you may notice that a new icon was created on my desktop, a Gramps AIO 644.2.5. So that is actually the Gramps program here. It will open up our program. <clears throat> if you were like me and you saved the installation file to your desktop, which is this one with the blue and yellow shield, you may want to go ahead and delete that just so that you don't get confused as to which one you're going to use. All right, another way that you can open up Gramps is if you go down to Start, click, under Recently Added, you'll see Gramps. Another way is you can scroll down to the G's, 
and there's a folder here called Gramps. You click on that, and it'll give you two files here. And you don't want to use this one that says Dash Console. You want to use the one that says Gramps, AIO, 64, or 32 in your case, possibly. Alright, so I'm going to go to the Gramps AIO file here, and I'm going to double click it to open it. And this should open up our Gramps program if it was installed successfully. It may take a bit of time for the very first time that you open it, just because it's creating some user files behind the scenes. Alright, so there we go. Gramps was installed successfully. Now we'll get into more about using the program in future videos. But the last thing that I want to show you in this video, actually, is how to uninstall Gramp should you no longer want it on your computer. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One way, if you can find it in your Start menu, you can right-click and just click on Uninstall, and it will bring you up to the Add Removed Programs window. But I'm going to show you how to get there if you can't find it. So you can right-click down here on Start, go to Control Panel, down here it says Programs and Uninstall a Program. So click on Uninstall a Program, and it will bring up a window here that says Uninstall or Change a Program. This is the same window that you would see if you right-clicked on Gramps and Uninstall. It will, it's the same window. Okay, so let's scroll down to the G's and find Gramps. All right, we select Gramps by left-clicking. And then we can click up here, uninstall slash change. This is going to bring up the uninstall window, and it will walk you through how to uninstall the program. Now all there is to it is you just click uninstall, and it will start removing the files from your system. Once it's done, you can click on finish, and you will be done. Now please note that if you are uninstalling Gramps, and you have some trees saved in Gramps, you'll want to first of all back up your trees if you want to use them later. And I can show you how to back up your trees in a future video. So that's the end of this video. Tune in next time for an overview of Gramps and how to use some of the most basic features that Gramps has to offer. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.